Hello folks and welcome back to SnowRunner, my own self-imposed hardcore mode. And we are here on Pedro Bay. And we're going to get a couple of missions completed here and then I have some other missions set up also. First one we're going to do is the Lost Tools. And that one is uh, Vehicle Spare Parts. And it's not going to do it right. So anyway, the vehicle spare parts over here. And for that, I have brought the White Western Star over because it has a crane on it. And I'm going to pick that up and take it over here and drop it off. And if we look, the next one we have, oh, that's lost tools. Moving the stock, so we have oil barrel and wooden planks. And we need to move them to the factory. So let's go ahead and jump into it. And I've already loaded the cargo up here. So we are ready to go. And something that I'm going to attempt in this episode is I'm going to do everything in first person, or actually do all the driving in first person mode. There's some rumors going around that the developers are working on hardcore mode and one of the hardcore things that you're going to have to do is do all the driving in first person so I thought you know why not let's give it a try I like driving in first person most of the time so I'm going to give that a try in this episode and see if I can do all of the driving in first person now of course you can't do the loading in first person. So that will have to be third person, that way you can see the crane and see the load. And I got to thinking, because I've thought a little bit about it, and whoa, get back on the road. And what you could probably do is as long as you're not moving, you can be in third person. But if you're moving, you have to be in first person. So I'm going to try that. And we'll see how it goes. So I did do a, a lot of driving off camera. Just so I could get used to it. Let's switch back down to third gear. I said third gear. There we go. And something else I was mentioning to somebody, uh, when you are driving and you're in automatic mode, you can hit your bumper and it will change your gears. And like right now I'm in second gear. And as long as I don't go too fast or too slow, it'll stay in second gear. And like I just went up to fourth gear, but that's a little bit too high of a gear. So I keep dropping it down a little bit, and we're still pulling too much speed here. But it tends to stay in the gear that you select a little bit longer than it would in automatic. And it's something you just have to play with and get a feel for it. But it does help you out, and I'm going to show you here in a little bit. Um some of the advantages to that. Okay, thought I might have passed it. So we have our delivery up here. This is being delivered to the engineer's house. And that is right over here. And I should have looked a little bit closer when I came in here. 
just to see what was over on the other side there. Because the mirrors, you can use them. But sometimes they're a little bit too small. And it's hard to see. Oh, I, mean, I think I need to come over here. And pick it. Yeah, there's one of the cargos I need to pick up. So moving the stock. Let's take a look at... So we've got an oil barrel and wooden planks. Showing one. And there is... So it's one oil barrel and two wooden planks. And they're being delivered to the factory. So I guess the wooden planks are not just sitting out here. You actually have to load them up regular. Which is okay, I can do that. Alright, so what I need to get up here. Right about there. So I put my mercy brake on, and now I can go to third person. And activate our anchors. Get our crane out. Get rid of this menu. up here a little bit better release it and make sure I can pack it restore crane and go back to first person we will go make our delivery. What is that? Okay, so that is... I already accepted that. That's the one we're on. I tried to do some uh, co-op earlier today. Uh, the random find a game. And... I got in two different co-ops, the first two that I got into, and started looking at the tasks that needed to be completed, and the person that has the game, what's it doing, there we go, the person that has the game did not open up any of the missions or the tasks. Actually, what am I doing? Yeah, let's go this way. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to back up here. I'm going to park you. And I have another truck, so I might as well, yeah, I've got the BM-17. Why is it way over there? And yeah, let's see, okay, the BM-17 has a crane on it already. Alright then, never mind. I was thinking the BM-17, or the other truck I had here, did not have a crane on it. But it does, so it can drive over here and... 
Uh, pick up the wood by itself. I don't need to load it. Now I do have the GMC. Uh, but the GMC is set up to pull fuel tankers. And I totally missed a fuel tanker on this map. There are actually two of the big fuel tankers. Now see how I did that right there? I was coming through that snow. I was in fourth gear. I knew it was getting ready to drop down to first gear. So I hit my bumper and I dropped the gearing down. And it stayed in second gear through there instead of going all the way down to first. Like I said, you gotta finagle it, but once you get used to it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And let's refuel. So this fuel tanker is just about out. 332 gallons left in it, which is still a good bit. But I also have that fuel tanker over there. Pull on around here. And this was also on this map, and it is a full fuel tanker. So we're going to the factory, and I believe I go across the big bridge here. Yep. Go across the big bridge, and I did pull the scout fuel carrier that I had parked back here. I did pull it up there in case I needed fuel up that way. Uh, because in the last episode, I was trying to get two vehicles, I think through here, and I was trying to make it back to the, no, it's coming through here. Uh, anyway, I was trying to make back it, make it back to the fuel tanker. And I was running out of gas, and I stole all of the gas from this vehicle that I made a, uh, that I delivered. And I was swapping back and forth in vehicles and made it to where I was within, I was probably about right here. Almost within reach of getting one of the fuel tankers, and both vehicles ran out of gas. this way so I took the little scout fuel carrier over there because I don't have a lot of missions left on this map I see I was in third gear I was getting ready to jump down to first gear I clicked on it and it went to second gear instead of first gear so like I said it could be very helpful so you drop back down to second gear, and this is too thick, but it's not in first gear. It'll tend to stay in the gear that I put it in a little bit longer. As you can see, it's not going up or down until I get a little more speed, then it'll go up. slowing down just a little so I'm going to drop it down to third it jumped to first so now I go to second and I'm not going up or down in anything I'm just hitting that uh, left bumper So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be playing this mode a lot more, my hardcore mode, because I would like to get this at the same level as my other one, 
where I've completed everything that is in the game so far so that when the new map comes out I can actually do it in the hardcore mode I want to try it in that mode first or try it in this mode first just to make it a little more challenging Why? Because I'm a glutton for punishment. And I, haven't, I am having a lot of fun doing this mode. So I can't wait to see what uh, the developers come up with for their own hardcore mode. I think it'll be very interesting. So let's change our trucks. And I need to go Yep, okay, so I need to go here And then there I'm going to top up on fuel Take it through here And make a right there to get to the So young one two four four three says hello. Hello to you too. Uh, so anyway, I'm going. Uh, oh shoot! I don't know what I was thinking there. I got distracted. I'm trying to pay more attention to the chat. Because I get into the game and I really don't pay a lot of attention to it. And I really need to. So I am trying. And I think I'd be better off. I thought about just turning around, backing up. I think I'd be better off just going this way. I don't remember if you can see really well behind the BM-17. Oh yeah, you can. You can see really good. There's no exhaust on this side. And I'm trying to use it more in my other playthrough. I did not use this very often. Because I just really didn't care for it. It seemed to be... seemed to tip over a lot more than my other trucks, the ones that I like using. And I just quit using it. But I really need to use all of the vehicles to give them a really good shot and see which ones I actually do like and which ones I can live with. And this is not a bad vehicle. <clears throat> it's just not as stable as my favorites. off with some fuel here. And this tanker was almost empty. So the little uh, fuel carrier there. So what I ended up doing was I was parked next to the big tanker. I kept filling up the Navistar and then taking the fuel from the Navistar and putting it in that tank in the uh, fuel carrier there scout fuel carrier to fill it back up so that is an option that you can do if you're doing like I'm doing and I can't buy trailers and I don't want to use fuel stations 
Uh, that's another way that you can fill up a trailer that you've depleted. Another way that you can do it, and I did it in another video, was I took a bigger truck, a truck with a huge fuel tank, and I parked the empty trailer next to the garage, and I kept going into the garage, coming out, and taking the fuel out of the vehicle and putting it in the tanker till I filled the tanker up. but I parked the tanker in the zone where you can enter the garage because I cannot recover a vehicle. I can't recover it to the garage in this playthrough. I have to drive everything to the garage. So again, I consider all the fuel parts and everything in the garage as something that belongs to me. So therefore, I can use it at will. This will be interesting. Let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, I can see the dock. There we go, but I don't want to get too close. So I'm in park. Yeah, that'll work. So I need two wooden planks. Everything has to be loaded manually. So I will put those out. That's good. Crane, get rid of that. Up. This will be the first one I load. So the crane needs to be a little bit high so that when I put it close to here, it is not touching the actual crane. Cargo management. I still wish you could load, you know, got that whole area there. You should be able to load four or five different things out there. Uh, all at once. But it only allows one piece of cargo on here at a time. Enough and pack the cargo, restore the crane. Everything looks good. So, where am I going? I'm going out here, come back around here, and head for the factory. See if I can keep this thing upright. And part of the reason this might be so tippy could be my driving style. Maybe I need to pay a more, little more attention to where my wheels are. I 
just thought of a show that I watch on YouTube every now and then. Canada's Worst Drivers. And if you've never seen that, you need to check it out with it. Because it is pretty funny. Uh, but one of the tests they put the worst drivers through is, do you know where your wheels are? And I consider myself a pretty good driver. I have never had an at-fault accident in the United States. And I've been driving for what, 40 years. Now, I have been in some accidents. Other people have hit me. It was not my fault. But never anything that uh, I couldn't drive away from. Had one in Italy once. Tore the whole front end of my BMW off. I was coming late for PT one morning and it was really foggy and I knew the road. And I slammed, it's just an old country road, slammed into the back of a parked Mercedes. The guy had parked the Mercedes in the middle of the road the night before because it was too foggy for him to drive home. And I slammed into him and ripped the whole front end of my BMW off because I never saw him. And he ended up getting charged with the accident because he never put out a warning triangle, which in Europe is big. Uh, and had he put out a warning triangle, I still wouldn't have seen it because I was going a little bit too fast. But he got charged with it, and I did not. All right, so the next one we have is the town supplies. So I'm already tracking it, but let's go ahead and see what it requires. So we've got to, got to deliver it to the town at White Valley. Two concrete blocks. Concrete blocks I actually can get on White Valley. Small pipes. I get the small pipes. Well, it shows I can get them here, but I can actually get them over here, which is much easier. And I have the ANK, I think, there. Yeah, the MK38 sitting there already loaded. And two wooden planks, it says I can get them right there, but I actually can get them over here at the sawmill. And I have the... Fleet Star, I believe, sitting over there, either loaded or getting ready to load. I don't remember which one. But let's go ahead and go to the MK38. And then I also have the uh, CLT or the CTL 9000, the cab over. So let's go ahead and pack this cargo. And whoop. Almost forgot. Now this one is scary driving. In first person. As I've said before, this thing yeah, this thing will haul butt. And you can get in trouble really fast. There's the harmonicas again. Let me know in the comments, if you've ever driven this truck, do you hear harmonicas? I don't know if you can hear them on the video or not. But I hear them very well in my headset. It's Pedro Bay. Boop, 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 boop. Stop. Okay. Back it 
up slowly. Use your mirrors. And I need to go to White Valley. Which is this way. Fuel, I'm gonna need fuel. Let's refuel. Oh, that one's almost out. I have to take it over and fill it up. Where is my... Okay, so I need to go down here, go across the bridge. Yeah, I can go all the way to here. And then I'll take them both over at the same time. I forgot I got a fuel tanker here. And a maintenance trailer. I got a maintenance trailer. I need repairs. This is going to be tricky. And it's a guessing game. Hey, and I got it. Yeah, I still got a lot of points in that. I think you get a little more lead way when you're in first person and you try to back into a trailer. Because I've been doing this for a couple of hours. Been doing uh, first person mode. Because I was setting all these missions up. And every trailer that I've tried to attach to, whether it be a fuel tanker, the uh, gooseneck low boy, or the gooseneck, gooseneck ramp trailer, or one of the little red trailers. Everyone I've tried to back up to, I've gotten it on the first try. So I don't know if I've gotten lucky or the tolerances to hook up to a trailer are a little more laxed when you're in first person mode. I don't know, one day I'll test it out, if I can remember it. Alright. Actually, let me just pull this up here. Stop the engine and go to, yeah, it's a fleet star that I have over here. And, okay, so I did load the, uh, load those up already. And all I have to do is pack the cargo and restore the crane. And what is oh, I was in restore crane. Okay, restore the crane. What am I doing? I 
Let's pull out here. There we go. Now I can put it in all-wheel drive. I was trying to put it in all-wheel drive and it kept going into crane mode. I do not know why. Wow, this thing is... Hang on, let's look at something. Oh! Crane's still out. Okay. It was really wobbly. I couldn't figure out why it was so wobbly. Because the crane's still out. Good thing I didn't hit a telephone pole. Still seems a little bit wobbly. Okay, let's attach our winch. Huh. Okay, guess I gotta do winch from the outside. And travel. So that should bring both trucks. So, got a question. Can you not get gas out of first person? Yeah, you can. You can get gas. You can go through a gas station and everything. This is my hardcore mode. So, in the hardcore mode, one of my rules is I cannot get gas from gas stations. So the only gas, oh man, that doesn't look good. The only gas I can get is from a tanker that I own or a tanker that I find, which I consider the ones I find uh, the ones that I own or from the garage. If I get gas from a fuel station, then it's going to cost me uh, whatever. It's either going to cost me. Where am I at? Okay, I don't know. It's either going to cost me uh, $3 a gallon, or if the gas station has a sign on it that says how much the gas is, then it'll cost me that much per gallon. Which is why you will see at the gas stations, not only is the gas station there, but I have a fuel tanker there also, because that's where I'm getting my fuels from those fuel tankers. Uh, just something that makes it a little bit harder, because I noticed in my other playthrough, uh, in that one I'm completely finished. I'm 100% in everything. And it got really easy toward the end. And it really, even the missions were not that challenging. So I wanted to come up with something that was a little more challenging and will keep me interested. So I decided to do this, and I think I went the wrong way, didn't I? Where is the town? Town supplies, deliver to the town. Okay, yeah, it's up here. All right, that's where I thought it was, but then for a second there I got... I was thinking, am I heading the wrong way? But yeah, so I, anyway, I decided to come up with all these different hardcore rules. And... Uh, I can't put the rules here on Twitch. I can't, like, add, or I don't know how, to add something on here to show what the rules are. But if you check out my YouTube channel, which is under the same name as Twitch, on the hardcore playthroughs, I have a list of my hardcore rules, and it's before every one of the uh, videos. So 
So I have other things like I cannot use the repair facilities. And I think, is this one? No, that one's not one. But if you go to uh, the service hub, you can get repairs for your vehicles. As soon as you pull into it, you get repaired. And if I do that, it's going to cost me $10 a repair point. And I'm keeping track of everything that I spend. And so far, I am halfway through Alaska here. And I have not bought any fuel from a gas station. Uh, I've only had one time that I've used a repair facility and got repairs, and that was by accident. I drove into the box to get uh, pick up a load, and it automatically repaired my vehicle, which the vehicle was had 30 points of damage, so it's costing me $300. And how I'm keeping track of it is, I've got it written down on a piece of paper, and in the beginning, I figured if I spent uh, was it 11,600 that I would buy a Chevy pickup and then park it at a garage and I wasn't allowed to use it because that was money spent but so far I'm only $300 in the hole so it can be done it is a pain in the butt but it can be done So I'm going to go ahead, this is my fuel tanker, I put it here, so I can use it, and it's not going to cost me anything. So in first person, if I wanted to, I could go in here and use the fuel station. But again, I don't want to, it's going to cost me money. And I don't... Well, it's dark, so you might not be able to see it. Uh, let's see if I can. Uh, yeah, this particular one does not have the fuel prices on it. But some of the uh, fuel stations you see actually have a sign out front that tells what the cost of the fuel is. And if it has that sign, then I've got to go by what that sign is. I think that might be the sign right there. I don't know, I can't really see it. I don't think it is, though. But some of the other rules that I have to follow, I cannot recover to the garage. So every vehicle has to be driven back to the garage. If it's too damaged to drive, I have to take repair points out to it to get it repaired enough to drive it back. If it's out of fuel, I have to take fuel out to it. If I roll something, then I have to take a vehicle out to uh, get it turned back over. If I get stuck, I have to take something out to unstick it. Okay, so that arrow over there leads to um, the other lumber yard which is a pain in the butt to get to. Which is why I decided to get the lumber on the other map much easier. Uh, another rule that I'm not real fond of right now. Ooh, this thing is such a squirrely truck to drive. But it is easier to drive it in first person than it is in third person. But another rule that I'm not real fond of is I can't buy trailers. I have to use the trailers I find on the map. And I thought that was going to be easy. But there are, I think, only three trailers on Alaska that you can use, that you can find and use. So that has become problematic.
Oh, I went past that. I should have went down this road. That's okay. Be a pain in the butt to get through here, but... This truck will make it. And I still have the trailer on it. Because I wanted to bring that trailer over here. Use it for another mission. And what did I have on here? I think wood. Yep. This one out of the way. Go get the ANK, the uh, MK38. Park you here for now. And I left it right there, sitting over the guardrail. All right, so let's see how bad it is. I should be able to pull out of that. Because this is a beast. It's a scary beast sometimes, but it is a beast. And it's just because it's it's so fast, you get yourself in trouble really quick if you're not careful. Because it's fast and top heavy. Even more so when you put the uh, tuned suspension under it and the bigger tires, which is why I run the smaller tires and the regular suspension upgrade. Because it seems to do a little bit better. In this game, I have a lead foot. So I know two things. Pull the trigger all the way for the gas, or pull the trigger all the way for the brake. Anyway, I was talking about the rules. Some of the other rules are, I cannot auto-load any cargo have to manually load it with the crane unless it is a cargo that it will not allow me to manually load. Uh, if we have time after this delivery, I have another one set up and it's the drilling spare or the drilling parts and that's in a container. Uh, and the container will not allow you to manually load it. It is auto load only. So for that one, I have to auto load. Uh, another rule is I have to use, or I cannot jump from region to region. So I have to complete each region in order. So everything is 100% complete in Michigan. I had to do that before I moved to Alaska, so I couldn't jump to Alaska or to Russia and get vehicles. Uh, I can buy vehicles, but I cannot sell them. So I can't sell vehicles that I don't like in order to get the money for upgrades. Which I have found is kind of a pain in the butt. But it's working out pretty good. It just, it's all about adjusting. Adjusting how you play the game. And I am not going to miss this turn this time. Now, I did break that rule one time, and that's for the GMC. It's the second truck you get in the game. Which, honestly, the truck is junk. It does not handle well in mud, snow, or anything. 
So I did break that rule because they did put the four-wheel drive unit or the all-wheel drive upgrade. They put that on the coved map, COVD map, the last one that we got. And I didn't think that was right because you really can't use that truck. And where was I at here? So this is where I'm getting the concrete blocks and I've already loaded them up. And I used the crane. Oh yeah, it's already packed. I won't start. There we go. And turn the lights on. And I better look see where I'm going. Can't go too far with this truck. And this truck is actually the Ford cab over. It is not all wheel drive. But I found that on the Alaska map, it handles really good uh, for a rear wheel drive vehicle. So I like this truck. If it was all wheel drive, I would drive it a lot more. It doesn't do mud. Can't keep it on the road. Uh, but it does do pretty good. A little bit of mud, it can handle. As long as it's not too deep. But you throw chains on it, and it'll go just about anywhere you want it to. It's kind of hard to drive in first person because you don't have a front end. With a little bit of mud like that, it has no issues with. When it's fully upgraded. Got to have that bigger engine in it. And you've got to have chains on it. I don't remember. So we are facing that way, so yeah, I need to go down here across the bridge. So go there. And I'll just put it over here. Hopefully it will slide through here. Yep. There you go. You can do it. I really like this truck. I wish it was all-wheel drive. It was the first semi-truck that I ever drove or ever rode in when I was a kid was a cab over. It was a Kenworth, but it was still a cab over. And ever since then, I have loved big trucks. And I've driven a lot of them when I was in the Army. Yeah, on paved road, on icy road like this, this truck handles really good. And I was surprised when I first bought it. I looked and found you could put a flatbed on it. Now you can also put the crane on it. So that's what you saw earlier on. But uh, 
makes it a little more versatile than some of the other trucks. And who knows, the developers may one day put an all-wheel drive unit in this. Hopefully it can handle this mud. I don't think I've ever taken it through here, but... Oh yeah, no problem. Alright, one more completed. Let's shut it down. And... The, what did I have over here? I think it was the Navistar. Yep. So here, uh, this mission was, nope, drilling equipment. See, I need to take drilling equipment, and I pick it up there, and I need to take it to the drilling site which is there, a nice easy delivery. Uh, the problem with this one is, I'll accept it, is that when I come here and I go to cargo, it will not allow me to manually load. For these containers, they are auto load only, which I didn't know that. I brought that monster over here to load it up and it's not gonna allow me. So, we have to go with auto load on this one. Forgot what button to hit there for a second. Make sure I don't hit the plane. Alright, so where am I going again? Plan my route. It's much different when you're actually... Oh, we over there, okay. Uh, much different figuring out where you're going when you're in first person than when you are in third person. Everything looks a little bit different. Take it the long way, so I don't get anything stuck. And this is a driving game. So you want to drive as much as possible. There are times when I take a longer route just so I can drive. Sometimes that gets me in trouble. Looking at my marker, not watching the road. Right left here. Watch my trailer. Back up a little bit. Make the turn and not hit that big snowbank.
Yeah, it's definitely almost like a different game when you're in first person. And I'm so thankful that they fixed the hands where they're not as bad. I would still like the option of getting rid of the hands if I wanted to. Uh, maybe someday. Got a left coming up. Want to make it take it wide because of the telephone pole there. Back up, give me that little extra foot and a half. Still with me. And make our delivery. That's one more. So I don't have a lot of these left. I had to do that one in order to do the oil barrel delivery. Which will probably be the next thing I do. Uh, because it is a long mission. Actually have to get the oil barrels from Northport and take them all the way to White Valley. And I have some other... Nope, not that one. Oh yeah, that's a big one. I thought I had another one that required oil. Nope, it's another one of those. Maybe I've already done it. I could have. Yep, I guess I did. Alright, so we're getting close to being finished with Alaska. Not too many more missions to go. Then I have a few tasks. And then we're off to Russia. Where the game turns totally different. We're back to the mud. And I'm going to need to find some Russian vehicles, which luckily I know where they're at. So that should be a little bit easier. So I'm going to end this now. Because uh, I try to keep it about an hour. And I actually have to go cut some grass before the wife gets home. So let me know what you think about the video. And for those of you on YouTube, uh, leave a like if you liked it. If you didn't, let me know why. Let me know what I can do to improve. I'm all about feedback. I'm trying to get a little bit better at this. And I appreciate any feedback I can get. So I will see you in the next episode. So until then, have a good one.